Hello there, YouTubers. Here we have a pulse width modulation circuit, and very long term viewers may remember this. Back in 2009, I already uploaded a video showing this. This was a school project, and I actually shot that video in school, so there wasn't a whole lot of commentary. In fact, there was none, so I uh, thought I'd make this much better video explaining this a little bit. Now, I can't really go into all too much detail regarding this circuit. Uh, since it is a school project, I do actually have the proper documentation, as you can see, <laughs> at least that. Uh, but uh, the teacher just copied this from another product, uh, a kit that was commercially available. So, he never really bothered to explain how the circuit works in, in great detail. Uh, that was just not part of the lessons. Uh, heart of the circuit is an NE555 chip, as you can see, that generates the uh, the clock frequency. We then have uh, some op amps for something. <laughs> uh, we do have what looks to be a push-pull output stage right there, and that drives the uh, main switching transistor. It's a MOSFET right there, IRFP150N. And I got a little protection diode protecting the outputs. Uh, the limitation of the circuit is that uh, the B plus of the circuit is also the B plus of the load. So you can't run anything uh, that uh, requires much more voltage than uh, 12 volts. Or, as a matter of fact, right now I'm running this circuit off of 15 volts, and it doesn't really seem to care. So should be fine. As we uh, turn this around carefully, you can see, yep, I did design this circuit myself, this circuit board, and as you can clearly see, I got one of the settings wrong, so I got these ultra-fine traces. That was, not, that was not supposed to be that way, but, I mean, I barely managed to get that stupid um, program to work anyways. I was using Eagle and uh, you may or may not know how much of a pain that stupid program is to work with. Got one uh, wire bridge going on right there. Other than that, it's, uh, well, I'd say all in all, it's not too terribly bad. Of course, uh, we got those circuit boards made in school. They did have a machine for that. This one is the NE555, that's the op amp, little dual op amp. There is the output MOSFET right there, and it's quite a big one. And we got two potentiometers on here. This one sets the on time of the transistor, and this one is a uh, an overcurrent protection. I don't even know what that is good for. It was never explained to us. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, give this thing a try. This is the setup. This is the circuit board, of course. Running it off of 15 volts using this homemade power supply. Here we have our load. It is a motor. This was designed to be a motor speed control. And hooked up to the motor. This is an 18 volts motor. That's why I got the voltage turn up slightly higher. Hooked up to the voltage input of the motor is the scope so that we can monitor our pulse width modulated signal. And as you can see at the moment, although the circuit is turned on, it doesn't read anything on there. And if I now go ahead and turn up the potentiometer for the on time a little bit, as you can see, we are getting some pulses. Now, the motor right now isn't doing anything, as you can clearly see by the little flag that I mounted to it. However, you may or may not be able to hear, maybe if I go real close up to it. It's making a bit of a whine, high, f high frequency tone. That's of course uh, due to the frequency of the signal, which is around 2.6 kilohertz, as you can see. So, I now go ahead and turn this up a little bit higher. As you can see, a little more. And our motor, well, it is turning, but you can see the definite disadvantage of this, uh, of this technology. On very slow speeds, you know, on very low settings, the speed of the motor is not very constant. As you can see, it's uh, 
quite skippy. Moves and steps. If I turn this down again a little bit, it's gonna get even more extreme. Eh, it's too low. Yeah, you can see it pretty well. Now, if I go ahead and turn the signal up to well, about 50% duty cycle, that's uh, well, about right there, I'd say. As you can see, we are getting a bit of speed. Still a lot of whine. That's, of course, the frequency that uh, the NE555 is running at. We can hear that coming out of the windings of the motor. I go ahead and turn up the uh, speed even further, or the on time much rather. You can see we are now, it's now almost always on and uh, we are just getting very very short off times. And as you can see speed is quite a bit higher. The, uh, the frequency that we are hearing is a lot more silent than it was before. I now bring this up all the way to maximum. Eventually, the peaks will just disappear and we're just getting the constant B plus voltage going out to the motor. So that's now running at full speed. And of course, since it is in fact getting a constant voltage, the uh, 2.6 kilohertz noise is gone. Let's turn this down again. Let me put this right up to the motor so that you can hear that frequency going. That's maximum speed. And that's the potentiometer turned all the way down. Okay, well this is probably the millionth take of trying to do this. I was trying to explain the basics a little bit. What kind of loads you can run and what loads you cannot run. But I just don't have the vocabulary present at the moment. So screw that. What I have hooked up to the circuit right now is this halogen light bulb. Um, as you can see, now what I was uh, wanting to try out is uh, how much current this can deliver. This is a halogen light bulb, so it's going to take quite a bit. The power adapter that this came with is rated for 1.7 amps. So I turn up the brightness. In this case, of course, the speed control becomes a brightness control. That's the nice thing about pulse width modulation. It's quite uh, universal. Now these uh, these halogen light bulbs have a certain kind of uh, threshold voltage under which they just won't do anything. And there it is. It comes on. If I now turn it slowly down again, you can see it stays lit once it's warm. I'm not sure if you're able to hear this, but you can actually hear the uh, switching frequency. It's very, very faint with a light bulb, but it's still there. Now, I cannot turn this up all the way, because eventually this uh, overcurrent protection, no matter how I set this potentiometer, the overcurrent protection is going to kick in, and I guess that's what the op amps are good for, that this works with. As you can see, we are already uh, putting well, about uh, 1100 milliamps into the light bulb. I turn this up even further. Yeah, we can bring it up even higher. 1.2 amps. Well, somewhere around here, this uh, overcurrent protection should cut it out, but um, there it is, nice and bright. And. Uh, the MOSFET does get a little warm, but surprisingly, it's. Uh, I don't think it's going to need a heatsink. Seems to be able to run this without problems. Let's see if we can bring this up even further.
No, I think we've reached full brightness. Maybe if you just got to take it real slow in order for the uh, overcurrent protection not to kick in. And then we have full brightness, and this is uh, well round about the potentiometer settings round about at the maximum, so I think at this point uh, we're just getting the power directly fed from the power supply into the light bulb via the MOSFET. So that's that. You can also use it as a dimmer. So there you have it. The pulse with modulation circuit that I built in school back in 2009. Thank you for watching.